What is up? How has your week been? Amazing, I bet. Today, I have a really good video for you, so stick around. We'll be talking about a topic that I wish every glasses wearer knew about, and that's because I think it can make or break a pair of glasses, and that is the anti reflection coating. I think this is really important that we talk about this because number one, the science is amazing. And number two, when you buy glasses, you will be asked the option to add an anti-reflection coating. And if you don't know what that is, then you can't answer that, can you? <laughs> so this boy got your back. I'm going to break it down easily so that you can understand what it is. And the next time you get asked, you can answer that confidently. Now, I don't know about you guys, but whenever I get faced with a purchase decision, I really want to know what I'm getting myself into. And I'm not just talking about how it reduces glare or reflections, I'm talking about what is the actual science behind this technology and why do I need it. I did a video a while back called Reflectance. I talked about when light passes through a transparent material, like a lens, some of that light will be reflected off of the front surface, but the majority of it will be transmitted through. That's just the law of nature. But us humans are smart and we can manipulate nature. So we can take the light that would otherwise be reflected off and like make it not. From high school level physics, we know that light behaves like a wave. So in other words, waves can add to make bigger waves and waves can subtract to make smaller waves. This is exactly the principle of which anti-reflection coatings work. Let's imagine light waves passing through a spectacle lens Given that we use a standard 1.5 refractive index as it hits the front surface, about 4% of light will be reflected from the front surface, and another 4% will be reflected off at the back surface, totaling about 8%. And you might be sitting there wondering, well, 8% is not a lot at all, but 8% in optics is a huge amount. Not only that, you have the same thing happening behind you on the back surface, which creates ghost images, which can be really annoying. Check this out. On the left, we have a lens that does not have an anti-reflection coating, and on the right is a lens that does have an anti-reflection coating. This one right here is reflecting about 8% back at you, and the other is reflecting less than 1% back. The coating works by creating another transparent layer over the lens. And so instead of one reflection on the front surface, now there are two reflections on the front surface. But here's the secret. By carefully designing the width of the coat to be exactly one quarter the wavelength of light, you can divide the reflections further. The light will travel through the coating and reflect back traveling a total of half the wavelength of light, more than the front surface. And now the two reflections are exactly one half a wavelength out of phase. You can basically line these reflections to completely cancel each other out. And that is why you see less reflections on glasses with this coating. This phenomenon really enhances your visual experience and that is why you'll see it on everything that is optically delicate, like a camera lens, your car windshield, and the front panels on your phones. Most coatings give off a green sheen when light is reflected off of them, and that is how you know you have an anti-reflection coating. But there are newer ones out on the market that give off a blue sheen. And I'm sure you would have heard by now, this is called the blue light filter. And I'll be diving into blue light filters in a separate video, so if you don't want to miss that, press subscribe. Knowing these facts about anti-reflection coatings is both a blessing and a curse, because once you know that lenses that are not treated with this coating give off a very harsh white light, all of a sudden you just cannot unsee it. Like, I'll be talking to somebody with glasses, and as soon as I see a white reflection, I'm just like, ah, 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 da, the glare, the glare. <laughs> just kidding. But for real though, it really makes me wonder. This person went to the hassle of seeing an optometrist, getting their eyes tested, chose frames that they liked, and the one thing that they set out to do, which is having good vision, they limit themselves on because they don't have the coding, which is just very unfortunate. Don't get me wrong, if you're price conscious and the place you buy your glasses charges you a ridiculous amount of money for it, then it's probably not worthwhile. But these coatings should be relatively inexpensive, so it shouldn't be hard for you to find something that is reasonably priced even with the coating. To me, being able to see clearly is my number one objective, and so of course I will apply it on every one of my glasses. I almost feel like I wouldn't enjoy wearing glasses if I didn't have them. Wait, so you're telling me that I should be getting these coatings on every single pair of my glasses now? 
Well, in an ideal world, yes. But we don't live in an ideal world, do we? So you will need to prioritize if you're on a budget. I'd probably apply these coatings on the glasses that you feel like you'll use most because that's how you get the most benefit out of them. If you're looking for a pair of glasses that you wear very occasionally, or when you're looking for multiple pairs of glasses on a budget, then I probably wouldn't recommend adding it on every single pair of glasses. If you're purely a sunglass wearer, then I'll go for the rear surface anti-reflection coating, because ultraviolet light from behind you can reflect off of the back surface and still hit your eye. I'll also be doing a full breakdown of how you can maximize ultraviolet protection out in the sun, so stay tuned. You probably would have guessed by now, but I'm a big advocate for anti-reflection coatings. But it wouldn't be fair unless I discuss the downsides of it too. The most obvious downside would be the fact that you can't apply these coatings after you collect your glasses. It has to be done during the manufacturing process. So if you only recently just got glasses and you're watching this now, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But for some, these coatings may be a double-edged sword. Manufacturers will sometimes add in a hydrophobic coating as well as an anti-reflection coating, which basically makes the lenses waterproof. However, that makes it relatively oleophilic, meaning that they are more likely to attract fingerprints. However, there are now much more premium coatings out there, so it might be worthwhile looking around for a better option. One thing that really breaks my heart is when people clean their lenses incorrectly and end up damaging the coatings. These coatings are very delicate, so you have to treat them with respect and care. Always use a microfiber cloth or soft tissue with lens solution. Scratches are permanent and some people seem to believe that you can just polish these scratches away, but that's a complete myth, you can't do that. Every time I spot a scratch on my glasses, a little part of me dies. One good news is that higher refractive indices like the 1.67 or the 1.74 come with an anti-reflection coating by default and with a hard coat to protect the stability of the lens. If you prioritize vision over everything and you want the lenses to last as long as possible, then I would highly recommend you get this coating on your next lens. There is no harm in having better vision. Again, if you're price conscious or you're looking at multiple pairs on a budget, then I'd probably skip on these but don't expect the vision to be phenomenal. I noticed the biggest difference when driving at night because cancelling ghost images can significantly improve my visual experience, not to mention the safety on the road. Do I think this is a dope piece of technology? Absolutely. As someone who is in love with optics and the visual processing system, anything that can enhance visual experience and the ways our brain sees is a big win for me. If you're still unsure and you would like me to clarify a certain section of this video, then the comment section is all yours. But I think that's enough from me. If you learned something new, or at least found something useful, then yay, thumbs up to you. If you want a thumbs up back, then I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.